Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is anti giant Beloved family, our text says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Philippians 2, 14-15 Everyone wants to be a shining star. Even the Satan, the adversary, wants to be the morning star, but his shine is darkened, not brightened, and he desires to dull every star of God. Satan is not his name, but more of a title. This is why in Hebrew, the appears before Satan. So it is the Satan in the original language. It's because Satan means adversary. So his title becomes his name, and he is referred to as the adversary. This is because he is anti-God. He is anti-Christ. He is anti-man. And everything that God created, he opposes and is anti too. So he is anti-love. He breeds hatred among the brothers and throughout the world. He is anti-truth. Jesus calls him the father of lies. For there is no truth in him. John 8, 44. So now you see, when God gives you a dream, he twists it into a nightmare. When God gives you a hope and a future, he only shows you despair and your past. If we know that he is anti, that's all he does, then you know that if it's against God, it's the Satan and it's sin. I pray the seed sets us free this morning. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? Do you even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. James 4, 13 to 16. Listen to that wisdom family. When we disregard God's will, even casually, it's sin. Some people don't even consider God in their daily lives. They go about life every day, doing everything until it becomes mundane and routine. But here's the word of scripture. 1 Thessalonians 16 says, Rejoice always. Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing or pray always. And verse 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This will transform your life. Add prayer, thoughts about Christ, questions to him throughout your day. Develop a true relationship with him, not just a religious ritual. Even that formula may sound ritualistic, but it's meant to be relational. Just saying, thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. That's praying. It's a mindset. When we first fall in love with someone, they are all we think about. We call them morning and night, and some of us have even fallen asleep on the phone. That's young love. This is what Jesus tells the church at Ephesus in Revelation 2. He says, return to your first love. God is love. And we can get so cluttered with the form of godliness, we end up denying the truth and power which causes us to live in the first place. We only love because Christ loved us first and laid down his life for us. We can easily, all of us, especially me, fall into a form of godliness in the name of God. My prayer is to stay in humility. This is the gift of Christ that is painful to accept, but good for our souls. Lord, please keep me humble. Amen. Our text this morning is talking about shining star. And God created the stars in the heavens, including the sons and princes of God. So we open our lessons with the adversary, one of the stars God created, 
Isaiah says, How have you fallen from heaven, morning star? Son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. Now watch the adversary, the Satan work. God created the celestial beings, the stars in the heavens. So I will create stars on earth, says the adversary. So now we have stars in sports, entertainment, business, and community, even churches. And the stars among the stars, we call them all stars. We celebrate stars for their fame and for the amount of money they make. We give them fame and glory and praise. See what Satan has done in the earth? He's created that which opposes the creation of God in the heavens. Stars were not meant to be worshipped. For even the angel told John, don't worship me, worship God. Many of us worship stars. We put their posters on our walls. We idolize them. But Isaiah says, stars fall. Paul says our generation is warped and crooked. We worship created beings and call them stars. But the only stars are the children of God who are blameless and without fault, not because of their acts alone, but because of the truth of faith that they have. We are righteous because we believe, not because we simply do right. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. The Greek meaning of the word Lucifer is the light bearer. Ironic because he carries an anti-light, a false light. He is full of darkness and rules by ignorance. I didn't say in ignorance because he has more knowledge than a lot of men. He rules by ignorance to keep us in the dark about the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In John 8, 12, Jesus says of himself, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of the sun, the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. He is the light in the darkness. He alone is the shining star that lights up the world. Much love.